Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. Are there types of exercises that are truly bad for muscle hypertrophy and that you should definitely avoid? We have a brand new study, the first one on trained individuals exploring a style of training that many claim is suboptimal for building muscle. As we'll see, the results are truly fascinating and may surprise many. But first, what style of training am I talking about? It's static training, also known as isometric training. There are endless ways to train with isometrics. Common examples include planks, wall sits, and static holds. But you can also just hold the weight at a chosen position with many normal exercises. Let's analyze the new paper, and then we'll discuss what implications it has for training to maximize muscle hypertrophy. Let's dive in. Twenty-three trained individuals were recruited with an average of around 4.2 years of experience, but there were subjects with as much as 9-10 to 10 years of experience. This is actually one of the subjects here. With one leg, subjects performed a max effort knee extension isometric contraction for 30 seconds per set. As this was max effort, the RPE values for each set was 10. And it's also worth remembering that fatigue inevitably kicked in and their force output did gradually decline throughout the 30 second set despite continued max efforts. The researchers aimed to have subjects perform the isometric with their knees bent as much as possible, which ended up being around 125 degrees on average. So we can call this a long muscle length isometric. Fascinatingly, there is research demonstrating that long muscle length isometrics tend to build more muscle than short muscle length isometrics. With their other leg, subjects train dynamic knee extensions, moving from around 125 degrees of knee flexion to 10 degrees of knee flexion. Each set also lasted 30 seconds, and the loads were continually adjusted so that each set, subjects were training to or very close to momentary failure. Average RPE per set was close to 9. Note that having the same subjects perform both conditions reduces the likelihood of differences in genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors confounding the results. Subjects trained both exercises with 3-5 to five sets per session, with 90 seconds of rest between sets, twice per week for 6 weeks. Muscle thickness of the anterior thigh and lateral thigh were each measured across three regions. Overall, changes in size were broadly similar between both conditions. Although, fascinatingly, some measures lean towards the isometric condition, particularly the upper anterior thigh region with the majority of the distribution exceeding the region of practical equivalence. That said, there's still uncertainty. From a cautious perspective, you could justifiably interpret this as no clear difference. On the other hand, given this was only a six-week study on trained individuals, the fact some measures lean towards the isometrics may hint at a small advantage. Either way, these results do not support the idea that isometric muscle actions are terrible for building muscle. Let us entertain the idea that isometrics had a small advantage. I think there are two plausible explanations. Firstly, the duration of the sets were equated between both conditions. But since the isometrics were performed with a maximum effort for the entire duration, total time under high tension would have been higher. If the normal dynamic training condition performed additional sets to equate total time spent at high tension levels, perhaps gains would have been similar. Secondly, the isometric spent more time at the most lengthened position, which may have some advantages for stimulating growth. I'll also add that in our last video, we overviewed the literature comparing different ranges of motions and we saw that lengthened partials appear to be at least as good as a full range of motion, if not better in some cases. That shouldn't be confused with me saying a full range of motion is bad. It certainly is very effective for building muscle and may be considered an excellent default option for most. But it is nevertheless the case that this new study further adds to the accumulating literature suggesting a full range of motion might not be essential. Before moving on, just remember that this is still just one small study. There's statistical uncertainty and that the findings are specific to the design employed. Let's move forward and see what other research we have comparing isometrics to regular training or other muscle actions. One paper from 1957, yep, you heard that right, 1957, compared isometric curls and overhead presses to dynamic dumbbell curls and overhead presses. Upper arm circumference gains were worse with the isometrics. 
but circumference is far from a precise measure of hypertrophy. We have five other studies. Four find that isometrics manage to produce similar increases in measures of muscle size, while one of them fascinatingly suggests regional differences in growth between eccentric-only and isometric-only hip extension training. We know the new paper used max effort isometrics, but it's worth pointing out that some of these papers had subjects hold sub-max isometrics for a duration, suggesting that gains can still be achieved without sustained all-out max effort isometrics against an immovable object. Now, this certainly is still not a ton of strong data, but there is other somewhat indirect data from a 2007 review paper. It included an exploration of the average rate of muscle growth from a range of variables. It found that dynamic training tended to increase quad cross-sectional area by 0.11% per day, while isometric training tended to increase quad cross-sectional area by 0.11% per day, so the rate of gains were identical. As for the elbow flexors, dynamic training tended to produce an increase of 0.2% per day, while isometric training tended to produce an increase of 0.14% per day, which isn't super far off. There are far fewer data points contributing to the isometric percentages, and we're comparing the rate of growth between varying studies. So the research directly putting isometrics up against dynamic training is stronger evidence. Summarizing things so far, further research will only help our insight. But I'd say what we currently have undeniably demonstrates that isometric training builds muscle quite well. They do not deserve to be called terrible or even meaningfully inferior since in the head-to-head -head comparisons we have, isometrics tend to hold their own. We know that most of the research assessing isometrics has, for the most part, explored max efforts against an immovable object or submax holds on specialized machines which aren't identical to popular isometrics like planks or wall sits. For this reason, I cannot definitively say these common isometrics are definitely going to be as good as normal training, but my best guess is they might be very similar, and if there is a difference, I don't anticipate it being that big. Part of the reason I suspect this is due to research on high rep training. We know that higher reps, provided they are taken to or very close to failure, can be similarly effective for hypertrophy to lower reps. I think one strong explanation behind the effectiveness of higher reps is that although they initially involve low muscle fiber recruitment and tension, as you continue performing reps and get closer and closer to failure, fiber recruitment and tension increases, resulting in a robust stimulus for hypertrophy. In a similar way, holding isometrics may initially involve low fiber recruitment and tension, but as you continue holding it and push through the pain, fiber recruitment and tension increases. So, should you train with isometrics? Well, the choice is yours. The totality of the evidence does not indicate they are essential for maximizing hypertrophy, but they are not terrible or meaningfully inferior so I'd consider them another tool in your toolbox. Some may enjoy the variation provided by isometrics, while I know others may find them boring. For those of you interested in giving them a shot, the following details might be helpful. As the authors of the latest study describe, it is very much possible to perform overcoming isometrics without expensive equipment. All you need to do is just push or pull against an immovable object. As done in the new study, you can do multiple sets of 30 second holds, or as other studies have done, you can hold shorter duration contractions, rest for a short duration, and then repeat as many times as you desire. As for non-maximum holding isometrics, I think the best way to approach these is simply to hold them until you get to or very close to failure, and that counts as one set. Another aspect worthy of discussion is muscle length. As mentioned earlier, we do have some studies suggesting that isometrics at longer lengths tend to build more muscle than isometrics at shorter lengths. That said, I'm not necessarily convinced that you have to go out your way to perform isometrics at the maximum stretch you possibly can. The latest study did use isometrics at 125 degrees of knee flexion, but there was no comparison to other degrees making it difficult to know how other angles would compare. But in a few studies comparing long to short isometrics, the long muscle length training involved an isometric leg extension at around 90 to 100 degrees of knee flexion, which is still a bit away from a maximum stretch. 
Similarly, a few studies we saw comparing isometrics to dynamic training also involved the isometrics performed around 90 to 100 degrees of knee flexion. Given great results in all these cases, you can rest assured isometrics that don't achieve a maximum stretch can still deliver great gains. Furthermore, it is still worth recognizing that short-length isometrics can produce detectable growth, so I wouldn't call them utterly useless. So exercises like the plank are probably still capable of being quite effective. A final point worth touching on is that for some, especially if you're well-trained, isometrics like planks or wall sets may be far too easy for you such that it takes way too long to get close to failure. Fortunately, there are ways to increase the challenge such as using additional weights or a harder bodyweight variation. If you're searching for further guidance on programming to obtain your goal physique, our high-quality partner, the Alpha Progression app, can generate personalized programs that are truly comprehensive and well-rounded. Input key details, such as what equipment you have, how often and how long you're able to train, and if you want to emphasize certain muscles. This generally takes less than a minute. The training philosophy is based on the latest scientific literature, and further customizations can easily be done, like changing any training variable or implementing things like supersets. During workouts, there's a built-in warm-up set calculator and rest interval timer. The app also provides progressive overload recommendations to assist you. Of course, the app can automatically log your progression across time. If you're unsure about exercise technique, there are straightforward video and text instructions on nearly 800 exercises. The reviews from tens of thousands is a testament to its exceptional quality, but we would love to know what you think. The link in the comments and description gives you a free two-week trial of all its features, plus 20% off a subscription if you decide to continue. Thank you for making it to the end. Feel free to check out another one of the videos at the House of Hypertrophy.